Okay, today is January the 8th, 2018, and right now at 10 p.m. we have a temperature of 55 degrees in the foothills of Los Angeles. The relative humidity is 94%. The dew point is 53 degrees, and the barometer is down at 29.93 inches. All right, so far today we've had 0.74 inches. That brings the season total to 1.12 inches. Starting on uh, Janu uh, on July the 1st, uh, 2017, the total is now 1.12 inches. All right, and uh, I don't think that the uh, forecast for uh, 3 to 7 inches in the uh, foothills of Los Angeles is going to materialize. And the reason for that is because of this uh, low pressure right here, which has uh, high pressure being forced right right into the center of it. And that's why there's no moisture wrapping back around that vortex. We have a blockade built in as well, right here, that is evaporating the jet stream flow. It would normally be flowing right into that low and feeding that low pressure. Let's take a look at this in the uh, IR map. We can see what's happening. All this jet stream moisture is just evaporating right about here. And that is maintaining the separation. And this low will move through. We can see that there is very little moisture in this frontal system as it moves through. So Southern California is going to get some peanuts from this system. The Bay Area is really getting all the rain. If we take a look at the uh, Doppler map right now, we can see that the uh, all the rain is, is right up here in San Francisco and San Jose. They're getting all the rain, and we're getting just a, a very small amount. And the reason for that is that these uh, NEXRAD ground transmitters are chopping up the rain. And we're going to show that. Right up here, the uh, Fortuna transmitter near uh, Eureka is uh, evaporating and chopping up the, the, uh, the rain. We can see that all these little pie-shaped cutouts are a result of the NEXRAD WSR88D uh, microwave transmitter evaporating and chopping up the rain pattern. Now that transmitter up in Eureka is has a call sign of KBHX. All of these uh, NEXRAD Dopplers have call signs allocated by the FCC because they broadcast high power microwave RF. Now uh, these transmitters, uh, the, rather these uh, Doppler radars are uh, marketed as severe weather detection radars, but they also operate dual function. And that's why they ha are uh, required to have uh, call signs. Okay, so we're getting a good example right here of uh, how they function. They're actually chopping up the rain, minimizing the precipitation totals. Down here in, in Sacramento and San, uh, San Francisco, we don't see any of that activity. Now, something interesting I want to point out, here is Oroville right here. And notice this 120-degree uh, area right here. There's a transmitter uh, right adjacent to uh, Chico, or rather Oroville right here. This is where the dam is right there. Now, notice that this has been going on all day. This area right here, this 120-degree pie-shaped cutout has been maintained all day. And that is preventing the rain in this area here, which would all flow down these uh, rivers and tributaries right into the dam, because that uh, spillway is still being uh, repaired. And actually, there's been cracks discovered in the, in the brand new uh, cement pours on that spillway. You can find that on YouTube. The, just look up Orville uh, Dam Progress on YouTube, and you'll find a whole lot of videos Great videos with drones taking the photography in high definition. At any rate, it looks to me like this uh, particular transmitter here in uh, the San Joaquin Valley near Orville is, uh, that's named KHNX, right here. And that is the transmitter that is maintaining this arc of very, very light rain. That's why it's very light green. And so they're, they're preventing, it looks to me, like they're preventing the rain in this arc of area. And that, this is all mountainous up here. 
and so that will prevent <clears throat> a lot of flooding and uh, this dam will not fill up quite as fast all right so that's what it looks like to me also we can see the pie shape cutouts uh, this map is refreshed about every 10 minutes <clears throat> all right so if we uh, go down south here we see that most of the rain is occurring over San Jose, San Francisco, and also Sacramento. But down here, uh, over the LA area, we're not getting as much. Now down here near San Diego, we can see a lot of yellow offshore. And we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, with this flow. There's a transmitter down near San Diego, which is KNKX. All these are listed, by the way, on Wikipedia. If you just look up uh, WSR-88D, NEXRAD, you'll get all the information you need on uh, those transmitters, where they're located, and you can look them up on Google Earth. You can plug in the coordinates, just copy and paste the uh, coordinates, and you can get a, a, a ground view, uh, and you get to see what these uh, transmitters look like. They're basically a very large white radome stacked on about a six-story tower. All right, so um, we can see some rain over the foothills of Los Angeles right here. And uh, earlier today, we saw a lot of yellow over the uh, burn areas. We'll have to see how that works out. It doesn't seem like we're going to get a whole lot of rain from this uh, system that was predicted. Uh, that may change, but uh, looking at this map here, we're going to see a lot of wind here in about three hours, three and a half to four hours. This uh, this area right here should be a tight spiral. This is a surface to upper level low. We can confirm that right here on these pressure charts. This is the, uh, uh, right here we have the uh, surface, or rather the 500 millibar map. Here's that low moving right towards Southern California. It's got some really clean looking isobars. There is a little bit of jaggies right here, which indicates uh, some turbulent flow at this 500 millibar level. And that could be some transmitter manipulation like we were showing in the uh, video uh, yesterday. All right, let's look next here at the uh, 300 millibar map. This is a closed low. You see some squiggly lines. All right, and, and of course the uh, surface map I don't have uh, pulled up, but there is a, a very large area of surface low pressure. And so we should be getting a lot of rain uh, from from this system moving through, but what's actually happening is the manipulation here is evaporating this frontal system. We can see that right here. This frontal system is sweeping through the area, and we're going to get just the very tail end of this thing as it moves through. And notice also, this is the uh, this is the tropical flow that was moving right into California for about seven days. This has all been pushed away by this high pressure right here, right on top of that uh, surface to upper level low. And that's why uh, two things: the the surface map, the uh, this this map here, this is the surface analysis map, is not accurate. They're depicting they are depicting a high way out here when in fact it's right on top of this low, right here. And that's why the uh, frontal system is evaporating. So if we go back and take a look here, we can see that very clearly what's happening. The jet stream is is, is dead ending into this uh, installed area of high pressure right here. And uh, so they've got this whole thing isolated, and we're going to get a few peanuts. I don't think we're going to get the seven inches, the three to seven inches that we were told on the news. So far, we've had three, about three quarters of an inch. Uh, last year at this time, we had 7.86 inches on the 7th of January, 2017. And by the 12th of January last year, we were up at 11.02. So we are far behind on the uh, rain totals and, and once again the reason is is because of this manipulation and also the chemtrail spring let's go ahead and look at the modus today map today uh, for southern california we can see the uh, this is the la area right here we have a blanket of uh, moisture moving in and but we also have a blanket of chemtrails and we can see some of that spring activity as we pan over towards the uh, border here this is the colorado river and arizona's on this side you can see all these trails I don't know if you can see that on the uh, on the uh, screen too well, but uh, let's see if I can pan around a little bit. 
And right over here, we can see some streaks. This is a fresh streak right here. Also, we see the uh, natural brilliant white right over here. And this gray stuff is the chemtrail haze, which has been sprayed over. So uh, we've got some problems here. One of the reasons we're not getting the full amount of rain that we should be getting is because of all these chemtrails that are being sprayed. These little trails spread out into a big haze, and that's what prevents the lift. And so between the, the uh, spraying overhead, the ground transmitters uh, chopping up the uh, rain patterns as we show in the uh, Doppler map, all these things. And we have the satellite transmitters right here separating this jet stream flow, just evaporating the jet stream. Look at this. Nothing natural about this. We have a, a, a surface to upper level low, and this moisture is evaporating as it approaches that low. Now, anybody in meteorology and, and that knows a few things about thermodynamics knows that there's something wrong here. you got high pressure right on top of low pressure. That's why we're going to have all this wind here in about three hours. And yet, nobody on TV is saying a word about this. They just sit there silently, uh, not saying a word about this. And we get cartoon weather. It's because of you people on TV that this, is, this scheme has been allowed to go on for so long. And when I, when I refer to the scheme, I'm talking about the weather derivatives scheme, the, the gambling casino that's going on online right now. Take a look at Artemis. Dot B M. That's A R. That is spelled A R T E M I S dot B M is in Mary. Take a look at that website and then spend some time on it, and then ask yourself if that activity has anything to do with the weather manipulation that we're seeing here. Okay, I think that. Most of us will come to the conclusion there could be some motive and opportunity there connecting this activity here and rain in certain areas. Uh, see that, uh, as I mentioned, the Bay Area is getting tons of rain. So uh, I believe that there is a connection between the gambling casino weather derivatives being traded, the weather options, and these disaster catastrophic bonds. I think it's all connected. All right, here's the uh, southwest uh, rainbow map. We can see that it looks like the bulk of the moisture has moved already uh, through Southern California. Now, this may change. These, these people controlling our weather uh, can, can uh, change it up at any time. They can pull the power off of that low right offshore. They can pull the power off of this, and it will quickly redevelop, and that will uh, be a screwball for us looking at this situation right here. This little frontal system is evaporating. As soon as they pull the power off of that, it'll reform immediately, and that will intensify what's happening here. But as it is now, we're going to get plenty of wind, if nothing else, what's happening right here in Southern California. A lot of wind. Because they've got high pressure that's descending here right on top of that low pressure system. And of course, the tropical flow has been bulldozed out of the way. All right, so that's the report. Uh, I took some screenshots uh, this morning uh, showing some of the transmitter activity over the uh, state of California. We can see the uh, pie shaped cutouts here up near Fortuna. This was taken at about 4 p.m. See the burn areas are all getting heavy rain. This is about 4 o'clock. That's quite interesting because everything else is light. And, of course, the burn areas are getting heavier rain and yellow. That's a, a rather, a, is that a coincidence? I don't think so. San Diego. Let's go back to the beginning here real quick. We can see that there's that big cutout right here near Oroville Dam. Okay, that's the report. We'll just leave it right, uh, right here. Okay, that's it.